All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new Vliggity Vlog. I know it's been a while since I've done a proper vlog, and I figured I'd bust out the old camera and uh, let y'all know how I've been. So, I was gonna wait until my sunburn healed up a bit. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit of a, a crispy critter today, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to get out the old camera and record something, so uh, forgive the, uh, the crustiness, if you will. But yeah, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this vlog, I figure I'd talk about some upping the dates and things that have been going on with me, Andy. So obviously the sunburn, probably wondering what the hell happened. So I went out with some friends to Oiso Beach, which is in Southern Kanagawa, south of Tokyo, very south of Tokyo. And we celebrated 4th of July a little bit early because everybody was gonna be busy on Monday. So we all gathered the weekend and I uh, got to see my good friend Mike from the Chill Japan channel. And uh, he got to meet my other friends as well. Good time at the beach, um, shooting off some fireworks when the uh, sun sat and just enjoyed being in the beach even though there were a few uh, blue jellyfish, blue bottlers, I think is what the Aussies call them. Uh, thankfully, I didn't get stung or anything like that, but we did find a, a few of them on the beach. So uh, just gotta be careful sometimes. But yeah, I did apply some sunscreen, but I didn't give it enough time to get settled in my skin. So it all just ran off as soon as I uh, got in the water. And I didn't realize that until after the sun sat and I'm like, hmm, I'm feeling a little crispy today. And uh, I didn't really start to feel it until uh, we went home late at night and uh, I was just really, really exhausted. And uh, it was really hard for me to move, um, especially my legs and my ankles got really sunburnt. So it was just really hard for me to, uh, to move, move my ankles at all. Uh, but thankfully the worst of it's over. Now it's just uh, peeling time. So I'm just waiting for uh, everything to get all exfoliated, if you will. But yeah, guys, uh, basically what I've been up to, aside from uh, getting very badly sunburnt on the beach and avoiding uh, jellyfish stings, is kind of the same old, same old, you know, just going to class, applying for jobs fruitlessly, it seems, and uh, just uh, doing my time before I graduate in August, which is now officially a month away. We're on the final month of school and it just seems so unreal to be saying that i know i say this with every update video it seems so unreal i can't believe it's happening finally but you know it's been a very long journey for me to finally get my bachelor's degree and i got a message uh, from a good friend of mine from the united kingdom uh, his name's connor just saying how um, inspiring i am and that you know, I get to live my life out in Japan and do the things that I want to do, even though a lot of stuff didn't happen for me during this um, perceived linear timeline. You know, I didn't go to college when I was supposed to. I did a lot of things perceivably wrong. And, you know, a lot of stuff is happening for me at a much later age than it normally does. So it kind of got me thinking of just where I see this whole notion of this linear timeline for people, what I call it, you know, just the standard, you know, you go through life, you go to school, graduate high school when you're 18, go off to college, do four years, typically get your bachelor's and whatever, land yourself a good job and you just ride that out to retirement and, uh, once you get that gold watch and pension, then you just uh, live your live your life, man, until you die. And that's kind of what I thought my life would be like, you know, but obviously it didn't really turn out that way. You know, I went through high school, no problems relatively. Um, instead of going to a college right away, I went to a technical school, um, ITT Technical Institute in Dayton, Ohio. And I went there to be a web designer initially back in the mid 2000s because, you know, your boy's a bit old. <laughs> I My thoughts were to basically be a freelance web designer because a lot of businesses in Ohio at the time 
were just getting onto this newfangled information superhighway interminets and they want to do business on there. And I figured I'd just help design a few websites and obviously they wouldn't be able to update them on the regular. So I'd kind of get in like little retainer fees to help update the websites and stuff like that and do my own thing and be self-employed. You know, I had those aspirations even back then before the technology and everything else kind of, you know, caught up to such things. But I was uh, taking a night class and being that my school was so far away from where I was living at home, I didn't want to drive back home after my day classes to stay at home for basically like an hour or two and then have to drive all the way back to Dayton for my night class only to drive all the way back home at the end of it all. So um, my best friend was uh, going to school out at Urbana, Ohio at Urbana University. I have to specify the location because there's another Urbana University in Chicago. It's, uh, it's the one in Ohio. So I'd visit him after my day classes let out um, until it was time to uh, go to school for my night class. And it was really fun to be on a college campus and you know his friends became my friends as we all hung out and you know just play games and stuff like that and I'm like I really I really dig this lifestyle so I decided to uh, transfer to that school and I really enjoyed that very first semester it was the first time I'd ever been by myself independent of my my folks and I didn't really know how to handle myself properly at the time. You know, I pretty much spent the entire time just hanging out with my friends, playing games, making late night Taco Bell runs, um, and not really doing a whole lot of homework or much anything else. I mean, I did have a, a part-time job working at the cafeteria just to uh, get a little bit extra spending cash, but that's about it, really. And because of that, I got put on academic suspension got into a whole big dust up with my folks about it because they got the letter before I did. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And I told him it was all good because I talked with uh, one of my friends that I made. I basically talked with him and he said, yeah, you just submit an appeal letter to the school and uh, they'll bring you back on uh, probationary conditions. And that's what I did. You know, I just wrote an impassionate letter saying, hey, you know, it's the first time I was away from my folks. I didn't really know how to conduct myself you know I just I was very transparent about things and I said you know if given another opportunity I want to prove myself to the school and do good so I was brought back in under probationary conditions which basically meant that I had to maintain above a 2.0 GPA and then once I get past that first semester with above a 2.0 GPA they'd probably just let me off but I ran into a lot of financial aid problems um, at that time, my mom had remarried to my stepdad. And before, when I was going to IT Tech, I just had to list her income because, uh, you know, my real dad wasn't around at the time. Uh, he had just recently passed away. According to the paperwork, I just had to list her income because she was technically single. And I was able to get a lot of grants and stuff like that that way. But when she remarried, I had to list both my stepdad and my mom's income. And collectively, they made too much for me to really take advantage of a lot of uh, grants and scholarships and things like that, as it involves income-based stuff. At the time, there was also a law to where you couldn't claim financial independence from your folks until you turned 24. Uh, now that's no longer the case. And you know, if I'd waited maybe a few years <laughs> to get into school, I probably wouldn't have had that particular issue, but just kind of was what it was at the time. You know, I just didn't have enough money to afford going to school anymore. And at the time I was really working my ass off. You know, I had just gotten into a new gig working for the school's IT department. I felt like I was really learning a whole lot being around that really tight knit group of people, even though basically all we were doing is, you know, fixing computers from students and plugging in printer, copier, all-in-one sort of deals and just kind of working with that. But 
you know, I felt like I was, you know, using problem solving skills and really contributing to things rather than just swiping food cards at the uh, cafeteria all day, you know, didn't come home smelling like uh, chicken nuggies and things. And, you know, I was doing really well in schools, going all the classes, uh, just working my ass off as best I could. But, you know, when I got that call from financial aid saying, you know, hey, it's really good that you're, you know, kicking ass at school, but, you know, you won't be able to continue unless you take care of your previous semester stuff. And at the time, I was really working towards getting a voucher. Well, they called it a voucher. It's basically a, a full ride scholarship. I don't know why they call it a voucher, though. Uh, but <clears throat> I was basically working towards getting a full ride scholarship and I had to make uh, the top of the dean's list and stuff like that to really do it. And it was definitely a, a long shot, but I knew I had the, uh, the brains to make it happen if I really put myself towards it. But they said that that wouldn't cover for back tuition. So even if I did get the voucher, I wouldn't be able to continue going to school because I still owed money and all my grants and other stuff wasn't completely covering it. And it wasn't down to a point to where I could still continue to go to school. You know, I'd just owe the balance later. But, you know, they, they came to collect and they wanted that shit now. So I fell into a pretty bad depression. You know, I just stayed in my room, slept most of the day. You know, I only got out to, uh, to eat, shower, and stuff like that. You know, I didn't even go to class all that much, really. And, you know, it was also during that time I started getting into like personal development and things like that. So I got into the uh, Steve Pavlina personal development blog, who was definitely um, influential for me for a lot of different reasons. Um, but most importantly, just kind of getting me into this notion of earning passive income through like AdSense and stuff like that. So he kind of got the ball rolling for me to uh, be earning money instead of just doing a nine to five J-O-B, just clocking in and out all the time. But it was definitely very early days for me in that regard. But he did plant the seed. It just took a while. But long story short, um, because of that, obviously my grades dropped again. <laughs> and um, I basically got academically dismissed from the school at the end of the second semester. Um, I went to go live with my cousins and, you know, cause I just couldn't face my folks after all that. Cause you know, big dust up happened like during Christmas time. And it's just, it was very intense. And after promising that I would do better and failing spectacularly to deliver on that, you know, the guilt was just too much for me. So I just went to go live with my cousins for a little bit. And that started probably one of the darkest periods of my life. I'd say those three years um, were some of the darkest times because I was, I was just very lost. You know, I just dropped out or got academically dismissed technically from a school. Um, I owed, because I owed money to the school, I couldn't just apply to another school and continue on from there. You know, I had to find some way to pay, I think it was like fifteen to $20,000 at the time. So I was just figuring out ways to, uh, you know, get a job, be able to live on my own and just kind of slowly work towards it again. Even if I had to go to community college, you know, I just, I needed to get that post-secondary education. You know, it was, it was very, very important to me. I say it a lot these days that really the main reason that I'm, so gun ho for getting my degree is just to get the visa out here in Japan. And that was a big part of it back then as well. You know, because I just started getting into uh, very early J vlogging whenever they didn't answer questions about how can I work in Japan? You know, they just said, well, you got to have a bachelor's degree and get a job to sponsor you and you can come over. It doesn't matter what the degree's in as long as you have it. And so that kind of got the ball rolling very early on that I really need a bachelor's degree. But aside from that, you know, I wanted to be the first in my family to have post-secondary education. You know, it was, it was very important to me to have that because 
my parents got their diplomas. Um, my stepdad, I think, got his GED, but they didn't really go too much further beyond that. You know, I think my mom maybe took a couple courses at the local community college, but that's about it, really. Uh, so they didn't have any sort of post-secondary education. And, you know, they lived very rough, um, blue collar, uh, very manual labor type jobs because that's what's available in the Midwest, especially if you don't have a degree. Obviously, it took them a while and a lot of hard work for them to really make something of all that. But, you know, they went through hell and back just to get you know, a somewhat decent way of life. And, you know, I just, I didn't really want that for myself. You know, I knew that education was my way out. And it was my way to getting a much better life, you know, outside of living in Mercer County, Ohio. That's what I wanted to do. And obviously, you know, I wanted to visit and possibly live in Japan. So education was my way out, right? And that part is still very important to me and it's not really something I've ever discussed in any video or anywhere really. So y'all get the exclusive. <laughs> yeah, like I said, during those uh, three years after I got kicked out of school, I just didn't know what to do with myself because I was also when the American recession was kicking into effect. And especially in the Midwest, it hit especially hard, you know, because of the uh, automotive crisis and then the housing crisis. And it just kind of catapulted from this like black hole that was Detroit, Michigan and just exploded outward. And it got to a point where I couldn't get a job working at McDonald's or Walmart, couldn't get any factory jobs because all the staffing agencies wouldn't take me on because I didn't have factory experience and it's that catch-22 of, you know, you can't work at a factory if you don't have factory experience and you can't get factory experience if you don't work in a factory. So I was out on that front, even though I really didn't want to be working at a factory, but I, I needed something to keep the lights on, right? So at that point, I had moved back in with my folks, sleeping on the couch, one of my brothers took my old room, so just kind of was what it was, really. But uh, pretty rough times for your boy, Andy. You know, I just kind of got to uh, a pretty rough moment. Again, during Christmas time. It's always fucking Christmas time for some reason. You know, my stepdad also lost his job at that time as well, so things were already at a tipping point in the house. And my mom approached me one day and was like, hey, you know, you've been living here for a while. I know you've been really busy hunting for jobs and stuff, and that's kind of gotten you nowhere. So, you know, we've kind of reached an ultimatum of, you know, you either need to join the military or get the fuck out of the house because we can't have you here no more. You know, that just really rocked my world. I tried contacting some of my friends because at that point they had all graduated working jobs and just kind of building their lives up as well. Some of them even going to graduate school. So they were kind of just beginning their young adult lives, basically. But they didn't really have any space for me to crash on. They, you know, they didn't have a, a couch to crash on. You know, it gets pretty cold in Ohio during Christmas time. So I knew I wasn't going to last very long on the streets if I even attempted something like that. I'd probably get arrested or shot or die of frostbite, you know. So I decided, well, fuck it. Since nobody else is hiring, I'll at least uh, give them a look. The military, that is. And initially, I was going to join the Air Force. But uh, obviously, with the recession in full effect, I wasn't the first person to have the idea of, hey, if I can't get hired anywhere, why not join the military, right? You get three hots and a cot, paid on the 1st and 15th. Easy day, right? So I initially went for the Air Force because uh, my cousin, she had recently gotten out of the Air Force as a uh, white hat hacker. So she would go into like websites and stuff and just kind of see if there was any security vulnerabilities and would report those and stuff like that. Just really cool sort of stuff. And I'm like, I could do that. That sounds really neat. So I went to the Air Force office just to see what they had. And 
well, the office was closed. So, you know, I sent the messages and stuff as well over like email and whatnot. And they let me know in no uncertain terms that um, they were all booked for like everything because of all the uh, influx of, of people applying. So I was out on the Air Force, so I decided, well, we'll give Navy a try. And I was hoping and praying that uh, they would at least give me a shot at something because there's no way in hell I was going to join the Army or Marines. I just, I, those branches are not for me. So I figured, well, Air Force is out, then we'll just go Navy, hopefully, <laughs> you know. Um, so went down to the Navy recruiter office. They were much more willing to, uh, to work with me stuff like that obviously had to lose a couple lbs even though i was much lighter back then but still had to lose a few to uh to qualify so you know i just went on a quick little diet of uh low carb low calorie just long walks going on the treadmill stuff like that really basic exercises but i was able to lose about 20 30 pounds in a few weeks went to meps to figure out what they had available for me as far as uh, rates, jobs in the Navy. And we went to the office, um, I think like three or four times before they finally found something for me. And it wasn't like they had some stuff that I didn't like. And I was like, no, fuck that. They didn't have anything. So I was just like, oh shit, man, is this going to be like the Air Force thing all over again? You know, I, I'm coming this close to getting something, right? And, you know, they're just gonna turn me away when I'm like this close and I work so hard, you know? And finally on that last visit, uh, the only thing they had available for me was a sonar technician uh, surface for a six year contract. And I was like, six years, mm, that's, a, that's a little long. Because originally I thought I was just gonna do my four year bounce, get on the GI Bill, finish my college, go to Japan, yeah, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't quite so linear. I decided, well, it's the only thing they've offered me, so fuck it, I'll take it. And plus the, uh, the A school and C school is all out in San Diego. And originally I wanted to be an IT man. So their A school and C schools are out in Pensacola, Florida. And I just wanted something nice and sunny away from all the snow and bullshit of the Midwest. And I didn't want to be stationed in Norfolk either. So I figured, well, you know, if I'm out in San Diego, that's nice. Hopefully I don't get stationed in Norfolk. But uh, at least for agency school, I'll have, it, I'll, have, I'll have it pretty good. Did my whole Navy career, which I'm so glad that I documented all that on YouTube. Because I can look back on it now, many years later, and uh, just see where I was. Even though the, uh, the video quality is not that good. You know, there's a lot of grainy... Uh, like 240p videos that I was taking on my cell phone at the time. Just the way I carried myself on camera and stuff was like, if you think it's bad now, it was way worse back then. Trust me. Um, got orders to my first ship, USS Kurtz, FFG 38, 38 Special, out in San Diego. So didn't have to go very far. <laughs> didn't have to catch a flight or nothing. But we were going on deployment just a few days after I got orders. So I had to like, pack all my shit into a storage unit basically and uh, scramble to get stuff ready. Did my first and only deployment six months down uh, in Central America doing drug traffic ops. Uh, just doing like drug traffic interceptions, things like that. Not so much uh, my deal being a sonar attack, but uh, you know, it's a fun experience. Got to learn a lot being out there and get to meet a whole bunch of people from all different walks of life. Got to see uh, countries outside of America, which was the first for me. Uh, my first country that I visited outside of America was Guatemala, of all places. Kind of random. And I got to see Guatemala, Panama, went to uh, Colombia, and then we ended it in uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico before heading back up to San Diego, the end of our, our tour. And then after that, uh, we decommissioned the Kurtz. I went back to school, uh, sonar school, to learn a newer sonar system because I got orders out to USS Lassen DDG-82, which at the time was stationed in Yokosuka, Japan. And I was really adamant on getting to Japan. I didn't think it would be possible for me, but you know, I had some people in, in my division who were former 7th Fleet sailors 
at Nukoska and they saw how passionate I was about it. And so they were willing to kind of help me talk to the detailer and just say like, hey, you got something for me out in Japan? You know, because most people don't want to go out to Japan because it's, you know, it's a really hard life out there, as I would soon learn. Being in a foreign country stationed versus being stationed states, stateside, uh, there's a lot of cultural differences and things like that. But I always wanted to go to Japan, so it just seemed right, right? So thankfully, after we got that all ironed out, got orders to Lassen on Nukoska, but I had to go to sonar school first. So I went there for a few months and then uh, hopped on a plane out to uh, Yokota Air Force Base and uh, took a bus out to Yokosuka to meet uh, the vision, the ship, all that fun stuff. And that began the, uh, the Andy Japandi series proper when I started finally J-vlogging out in the old good old Haban. You know, it's like a tale of two cities. It's like I like to call it, you know, it's the best of times and the worst of times. You know, because it was the best of times, obviously, because I was finally in Japan, a country I've always wanted to, to visit. And I was stationed there. And, you know, I didn't have to be a Joe Blow English teacher, none of that stuff, getting paid by the Navy. Uh, I just made E5 before arriving there. Uh, so I was a petty officer, second class. And I was able to get BAH uh, shortly after arriving, even though we went underway a lot. So I wasn't able to actually get my apartment until much later. Uh, but once once I got that, then, you know, stuff started getting a little better for me in terms of, you know, being able to make content and, you know, just kind of have that work-life balance as uh, best I could anyway. But just as it was the best of times and just discovering this country and all it has to offer, it was also the worst of times in that, you know, like I said earlier, the workload in 7th Fleet out in Japan is very intense. And if you're not at like a thousand percent all the time, you're going to get left behind. And that's basically what happened to me. You know, just a lot of guys who were just shit hot at what they do, you know, and it was very, it was a very competitive environment. And for me, you know, I just, I wanted to go in, do my job and then leave at the end of the day but everybody wanted to go the extra mile and you know if you weren't going the extra mile you were considered a shit bag you know it's just really rough because i'm like you know i'm not like actively shirking duties or anything like that you know i wanted to contribute but it felt like you know whenever i did i would just kind of get butted out of the way by somebody else who you know wanted it more than i did and um so like i was living this like dual life almost where at work, I was just completely and utterly miserable. But I was living in the country that I've always wanted to live in and getting to experience all these wonderful things. And, you know, I'm convinced that, you know, the original Andy Japandi series quite literally saved my life because I don't want to make it all about this very dark subject, but, you know, there was a, a lot of times I had, uh, you know, suicidal thoughts. You know, like jumping off my balcony or jumping off the side of the ship or something like that when we were out to sea. You know, a lot of that stuff crossed my mind. And obviously I'd, you know, brush it off, just be like, Jesus, you're really working me hard today, huh? But, um, you know, I just, I had a lot of that stuff going on. And, you know, I thankfully went to therapy to uh, help sort it out. Um, it wasn't really enough to really help me all that much, really. But it was a nice way to kind of vent my frustrations and just kind of keep it from escalating. Um, but obviously all that stress has to has to go somewhere. And for me, uh, when I'm stressed out, I like to eat uh, a lot of comfort food and just drink a lot as well. And, you know, just doing that and being so tired from working all week, you know, once... The weekend would hit, I would basically just stay at home, just drink and eat a lot. Um, I'd still go out every once in a while, like film a video, but for the most part, I just keep it close. So you notice like the like 2015 version of Andy Japandi, which I thought was like my most creative work at the time. From a personal perspective, it was one of the darkest periods of my life. 
you know, I, that's why I didn't travel to Tokyo as much and kind of kept it within Kanagawa just because it was shorter and I could just, I didn't have to go as far to like make content, doing all that drinking and eating, you know, it's all got to go somewhere, right? And so because of that, I'd failed um, my physical fitness assessments and um, was up for getting administratively separated. Now, to to my chain of command's credit, they did give me the option to stay in because at the time the instruction was getting ready to change. So they had given me the unique opportunity to elect to stay in, have one of my failures scrubbed, and you know just go on like FEP, which would allow me to like lose weight, stuff like that, and then just continue on. Uh, but I decided at that point, you know, I was fat, literally fat and miserable. And the way things were going, I just did not want to be there. You know, I was just just completely unhappy with what was going on. And I just needed to get out. So that's what I did. You know, I took them up on the whole offer of getting administratively separated. And it was the best decision I ever made in my life. You know, I say that... Joining the Navy was the best decision of my life, but I also say that leaving the Navy when given the choice was also the best decision of my life because both the decisions equally saved my life, you know? And as far as the ADCEP affecting anything for me, it, it didn't, it didn't affect any of my benefits at all. The only thing that it affected was I couldn't take terminal leave, so I had to wait a bit longer to completely out process you know I got all that paid and had to buy back my leave dates which gave me a little bit extra spending cash which was good applied to uh, school at Michigan out uh, at uh, Kalamazoo Michigan to be specific so I figured I'd just get going back into school do the same major that I did last time which was management and information systems which is like business meets computers you know, I didn't realize how much I had to process when I got out of the Navy. You know, because like I said, I went through a lot of, you know, just troubling times, especially when I was stationed in Yokosuka. And having to go through all that transitioning out at a very quick pace and then transitioning into something else, you know, that I haven't been doing at that point in about a decade. You know, it just was very difficult for me to to adjust at first. I didn't think it would be, but it was. Because I felt like, you know, this this is my time, right? This is what I'd worked so hard for. To finally be given another chance to go back to school and make things right. But it was all falling apart for me. And I figured, well, you know, I'm I'm not just gonna give up at the first sign of trouble, you know, I'm gonna go and uh, get a new major, new major, new me. So instead of management information systems, I was gonna do uh, film video and media production. And I started enjoying classes a bit more, but you know, I still, again, had a lot of stuff upstairs to, uh, to unpack and deal with. So it was just very hard for me to, uh, to focus in class. And you know, at that point I had also transferred to another university, uh, the community college, which had a bit more up my alley as far as uh, creative majors go. So they had taught classes in the Adobe Creative Suite, uh, namely like Photoshop. And then they also had like some video courses that I was planning on going to later, but you had to take like the Photoshop class to qualify for it. So you know, it's a whole thing. But I figured that was a bit more up my alley and you know, I just do that to like rehab my GPA, get to learn some new skills, because I was also getting into being a freelance video editor around that time, as you guys know. I was, I just wanted to improve myself and to really focus on my passion for filmmaking. But again, you know, I didn't get my uh, my house in order upstairs, and so it just got to a point where you know I knew I needed to take a break and uh, reassess some things. So I dropped out of college again for the second time. <laughs> At that time, I'd also contacted my folks because they were looking to start up a video production company of their own. 
independent of what I was doing. You know, they were looking at doing uh, like real estate video listings, things like that. And, you know, they had just gotten some camera equipment and stuff, but they didn't know how to edit. They just you know, were kind of learning on the fly. So it just kind of was like a happy coincidence that it all came to be. Uh, so I decided to move back in with them for a little bit just to help them with the business, you know, with the idea that, you know, once things started getting going, then I would move out again and then eventually get back to school, you know, depending on what was going on with the business. So I would kind of find a nice time to, you know, kind of divest myself a little bit in order to get back to school, right? Uh, but the business didn't take off as we'd expected and it just kind of became, instead of me like living with my folks and helping them work on their new business and having this be like a nice family owned business and stuff, it just became me a 30 something year old living in uh, my folks place working at McDonald's which is not a good look, you know? So I contacted my brother who was uh, in the army at the time, stationed at Fort Bragg in uh, North Carolina and asked if, uh, if I could stay with him to, uh, to work on getting to college and going back out to Japan. Because, you know, I talked with uh, an old shipmate of mine at the time. He had just gotten out of the Navy and he was going to a uh, school out in Japan at a Temple University. And I didn't know you could use your GI Bill overseas at the time. My plan was to stay with my brother, um, go to the local community college, build my GPA back up to where I could apply. And that's basically what I did. Because initially I'd sent out my application and it got rejected, obviously. <laughs> I made a whole video about it. Um, but I didn't let it deter me. I went and took some courses and built it back up and after that first semester talked with the dean again he was really impressed with uh, my progress and decided to accept me under probationary conditions i continued going to classes at community college to uh, build up my credits build up my gpa and save up and at the end of 2019 for everything went to hell in a handbasket just a few months later uh with the uh you know what i got on my flight from North Carolina to Japan and it was just a wonderful experience to actually be back in the country you know it just felt like everything was right again and it's like all right cool I don't have to worry about the Navy getting me down I can just go to school and be in Japan at the same time so everything's gonna be good but obviously, the uh, you know what happened in the uh, beginning parts of 2020. Uh, we went from being to uh, in-person classes to uh, Zoom rooms, and it was a very rough transition, you know, especially initially because a lot of tech issues, but also just social issues because you know I wanted to finally be able to hang out with some people because you know I'd worked really hard to get myself back out to Japan, you know, I was going to school, I was editing videos, you know, just nose to the grindstone all the time and didn't socialize with hardly anybody during that time because I knew I was going to end up going back to Japan anyway, so fuck it, right? Um, but once I arrived in Japan, I was like, all right, now's the time. Get out there, touch grass. And, you know, the, you know what, was like, no, no, no. So it really wrecked my mental health and... Just like what happened uh, when I was in the Navy several years ago, I sat at home, I drank, ate a lot of bad food, and gained a whole bunch of weight back again. You know, I got my associate's degree. I thought I was going to then go to uh, Temple University because Temple had initially rejected me, obviously for the same reason Lakeland rejected me because my GPA wasn't that good. And I figured once I get my associates, you know, I'm coming in with a uh, really high G GPA. I think it was like a 3.4 or something like that. It was really high. Uh, it was definitely at least a 3.0. And I figured I'd just be a shoo-in, right? 
but um, Temple had rejected me again because they had taken into account all of my grading history. So I guess all that averaged out, even with you know the amazing grades that I was getting for the past um, two years at that point, wasn't enough to convince Temple to uh, accept me. So they were like, nah, we'll, we'll pass. I'm like, fuck, what am I gonna do now? Because at the time, Lakeland only did associate's degrees. So I was like, fuck, am I gonna have to go back to America to get my bachelor's so I can get a work visa out here? Like, what the fuck's going on? Then I got the email that changed my life. Um, One of the staff at Lakeland informed me that they were gonna be bringing in a bachelor's program at Lakeland. And it's been something that's been in the works for a while. But obviously with uh, the you know what, kind of delayed some stuff. They were finally just launching it shortly before I graduated. And I was one of the first students considered for the program. And as soon as they sent me that email, I was I was like, hell yeah, sign me the fuck up, please. <laughs> you know, once I graduated on my 35th birthday, no less here in this room, in my t-shirt and jammies, because uh, obviously with the, you know, I <laughs> couldn't do an in-person graduation. It was a really good moment in my life. So, you know, I did the job hunting thing, obviously with an associate's degree, didn't really get me that far. Couldn't even get a job teaching English. So I just continued doing um, my freelance video editing, just kind of keep me above water. Waited until Lakeland started up their bachelor's program. Now, here I am just a month away from graduating from said bachelor's program. And also a lot of stuff has changed in that time frame as well. You know, like, like I said at the beginning of this video, you know, if you can tell from the sunburn and the crustiness, I've been hanging out with friends once again because, you know, I got the, uh, the two tap going in for my third one next month. Feels good to be uh, hanging out with people and, you know, being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel with uh, graduating and all that. I say all that to say that there is no such thing as a linear life path. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have experienced had everything gone through smoothly, had I, you know, graduated from Urbana University in 2008, instead of graduating from Lakeland University of Japan in 2022, uh, there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't have experienced, obviously, with uh, being in the Navy, traveling, seeing the world, all that kinds of stuff. Life isn't linear. Life is very much an open sandbox with uh, random enemies, basically. So a lot of stuff is going to come at you and it's not going to be this slow escalation in uh, difficulty. There's going to be some problems that are going to come that you can just like no, like no problem. And then others are just going to smack you around. You're just wondering like, what the hell did I do to deserve this? But the one thing I've learned is that You just gotta roll with the punches. Keep your eyes open, cause there's a lot of different opportunities and possibilities out there that you just may not see right now. Like hell, when I was going to school, YouTube didn't exist. Isn't that wild to think about? This whole talking to people on a camera that I've never seen in person, putting it up on a website, didn't exist back in my day I just want you to know that there is no such thing as being on time with life events there's no am I too early am I too late am I out of time am I too old am I too washed up there's no such thing because everybody can interact with things in life on their own time everybody's running their own race you know there's there's people who graduate from college or university for my non-americans out there uh there's people who graduate at 21 hell there's even some that graduate even earlier than that you know they're like super geniuses right and there's some like me who graduated 36 some who graduate at 
66 and some, like my folks, don't even graduate at all. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not living your life right. You know, I've I've gotten my fair share of, of criticism from from people, mostly people I don't know, uh, but a, a few from people that I know, IRL, about the way I'm doing things and that, what the fuck are you doing, man? You're going to college, you're almost 40, like, what the fuck, bro? Just fucking give it up. Just go work in a factory or something. Fuck's sake. What are you doing with yourself? You live in a fucking shoebox in Japan? Like, what the fuck are you doing with your life, man? But, you know, it is what it is. Shogunai, my guy. Just gotta live your life. So, just want to thank everybody who's tuned in this far, nearly an hour in on the raw cut. And uh, just want to say it's, it's going to be okay. And that everything will be in its own time. And I'm not just saying that to you guys, obviously. I'm saying it to myself because, you know, I've been a bit impatient in life as well. And I'm just wondering, like, why aren't things happening for me? You know, especially right now, doing job hunting you know, I've just been rejected from every single job that I've applied to out here. Even with the prospect of getting a bachelor's degree, I've still been rejected. And it's just like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck's going on? But I just have to continue to remind myself that, you know, things will happen. Something will come. Whether it's here in Japan or back in America or something else entirely different just gotta keep an open mind and uh, keep on trucking so anyway guys with all that said this is Andy sign out for now and as always forever we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye <laughs>